Hello, my name is Jay Walter and this is Rebuilding. Oliver Wendell Holmes said a mind that is stretched by a new experience can never go back to its old dimensions. So let's stretch our minds, find answers to problems, overcome fears, and rebuild our first kingdom. Hello and welcome to Rebuilding with Jay Walter. We've got another fantastic show for you. It's the first show since COVID has hit, so we've kind of out of practice, and uh, I need to get back in and doing this. There's a lot of great people that need to get their stories out. Um, my my guest today is a good friend of mine, Angie Fenimore. Angie is a New York Times best-selling author. She's landed six-figure book deals with the Big Five publishers, signed with top deal-making literary agents. Her inspirational nonfiction, Beyond the Darkness, was published in multiple languages with Random House, Simon & Schuster, Pocket Books, and others, and has sold hundreds of thousands of copies worldwide. Her current project is in negotiation for an HBO long-form TV series, but coaching writers to success is her superpower. Her students are on the USA Today bestsellers list, number one on Walmart's list, and number one bestsellers on Amazon, and have signed big-budget movie deals, starring Hollywood A-listers. As the CEO of Calliope Writing Coach, Angie runs the most effective pitch conference in the industry. She's also the co-host of the Parsec Award-winning Calliope Writing Coach podcast. Welcome, Angie, and thanks for being on my show today. Well, hi, Jay. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Well, we appreciate anybody who wants to be on here and to share what they know and and how they got where they are and and what they're doing. So, so why don't we start off? Tell us a little bit about this superpower you have, this writing <laughs> coach superpower. Well, um, I tell you what. After you write a book, everyone that you know wants to know how you did that, right? Right. Because everybody wants assistance. So, you know, I've been coaching writers for, I don't know, 20 some odd years, 20, 25 years. Um, But I didn't actually turn it into Calliope Writing Coach until about six years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, so what I had to sort out was how did I do that? (laughs) Because I had the idea for a book, Uh number one, and it was sold to Random House within three days for 300,000. Wow. And it was on bookshelves around the world. Like I sold it on a synopsis and it was around the world, multiple languages within four months from nothing to galley proofs and then out, you know? Wow. Um, so lightning, like lightning speed. And, um, that doesn't happen. You know, this was my first time out. I had no idea what I was doing and I didn't know how the industry worked. Um, and I, you know, I just had to get that book out and it was important to me because I was, I'd, I'd had a near death experience after Mm -hmm. a suicide attempt. And, um, this was kind of trending at the time suicide Mm -hmm. was trending. And I wanted to make a difference. And so the question was how, you know, what can I do? And like, really no kidding. I got on my knees and asked and I was just told you could write a book. I was like, yeah, Fenimore's a writer. We're writers. And I I write a little, I dabble, you know, I could write a book having no idea what I was getting myself into at the time. Um, So the thing is, is that, You know, we tend to think that exceptional writing is about talent. You know, and I would have told you back in the day that it was a lot of work, but that I was tapping into something, right? And you'll hear writers say this, that it comes from somewhere else, some kind of genius, right? And that it goes through you. Um, But in order to teach anybody and everybody with important stories to tell, it's like, I don't know, some of us are mathematicians, (laughs) <laughs> Some of us are accountants <laughs> with important stories to tell. Is it really about talent, right? Mm. Now, um, I wasn't diagnosed until a, about five years ago, but I'm very dyslexic. And it was when my children started getting diagnosed that I was like, hmm. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Here. Yeah. And it turns out I'm super dyslexic. And so I did a lot of research on dyslexia. And 
um, it turns out that over the years, um, I've developed a lot of coping mechanisms. But what dyslexia is, is it actually allows you, your brain actually looks at problem solving differently, looks at the world differently mm. than somebody who's not dyslexic does. Um, so rather than think in a straight line, somebody who's dyslexic sees globally. We see all these moving parts. Um, like Einstein was dyslexic. And he said he flew with the atoms. Mm -hmm. And that was what happened, that he was able to see what he was able to see. Edison was right. dyslexic. So here I am with this, like, you know, this intention. I want to make a difference for people. I want to support people in writing. And how am I going to do that? So I had to reverse engineer what masters do. I had to look at what are these people doing? that are hitting this mega success right? and it's not talent. It isn't it. What it is, is effective storytelling. Number one, which isn't what we think it is. Um, like the industry has half the story, you know, <laughs> publishers and agents, they know it when they see it. Right. But to conjure it, nobody's teaching this. And I can't, I couldn't see why nobody's teaching this, why it's so obvious, but it's kind of like I was standing on the top of the Empire State Building looking at all of, you know, Manhattan, <laughs> seeing the whole thing and how it all fits together. Right. Rather than, you know, down on the street looking down, you know, 42nd and then down, right? And right. trying to sort out the whole map. So when you look from that perspective, you can see connections that you couldn't see otherwise. Hmm. And then um, another piece of it is um, you've got to have a cradle for your creativity. Um, we get shut down very quickly and easily. The parts of our brain, the part of our brain that produces cre creativity doesn't function alongside at the same time as um, the critique part of our brain. Hmm. And so you have to separate those out and you have to provide a very safe space for the creativity and keep it keep it safe for mm. a long time yeah. um, until that project is completely fleshed out and done. And then you can bring in others to look at it, which is the opposite of what the industry does. The first thing that you do if you say I'm a writer is you join a critique group and you're going to get all this, you know, non-professional advice from other writers and it's all their opinions, which can completely um, kill your own creativity and your own voice. And, and then you start to doubt yourself as well. Right. 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 And the third thing is being trained in what gatekeepers are looking for, literary agents, publishers. What are they looking for? What's going to sell? That's what they're looking for. What's going to sell? They're looking yep. for their next yeah. big meal ticket, right? The next right. brain maker. And so you have to be trained in what they're looking for and how to write from there and how to tell a story that people can't put down, that they call in sick the next day rather than <laughs> stop reading in the middle of the day, right? Right. And then you have to have connections to gatekeepers. So there you have it. It's, mm. That's the recipe. So you right so you have the recipe, and so that what's that's what gives you that superpower. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, cool. and, you know, proof's in the pudding. It's, well, yeah. I, I test everything on my grandchildren first. <laughs> I'm serious. So I've developed all these methods for um, revision and for um, writing that pull for creativity and keep your voice sacred, mm -hmm. basically. And, um, and then also allow for you to structure that story because it's all really math and science. It's not really talent right. that produces, you know, hit after hit after hit. Um, so that you're so that you're looking where you need to be you're training your eyes where you need to have them trained if you want success okay right? well, which I, is I, not to say i'm not talking about literary quality literary quality is also math, also math and science by right. the way well and, and that, that's a nice thing to hear uh, being an engineer by training having a formula in front of me you know i i write software so i write about the equivalent of a novel every couple of years in software, but, uh, mm -hmm. um, having, you know, I kind of understand I have to have flow and I have to have context and logic and all those things have mm -hmm. to be right for the software. And so, so I kind of understand what, you know, what you're saying. Very and, good. Yeah. So what do, what do readers call out immediately are things that don't make sense. If yeah. It doesn't make sense to them. Right. 
but it is very much like a schematic, you know, an excellent manuscript. And you have to have those first steps first. Everybody wants to dump that backstory in there at the beginning. And that does not put us on the ride for the Mm. reader. The reader has to have an avatar. You know, they have to climb into a character's skin in order to be invested. And I'm talking, this is every genre. This is self-help. It's every genre, you know? And so there are just certain things that you've got to do first. You've got to lay it out first. You've got to get a foundation laid before you can bring in the wire. Right. Right. So, so how do we, how do you, uh, I know I've been to some of your in-person classes. You and Michael are great dancers, by the way. Um, Boy, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, if you if you ever have been to one of their in-person classes, you'll understand what I mean. But um, so you're you're developing this new new product. Is that a good yes. thing to call it? Tell me a yeah, little bit more about, about this about coaching. COVID hitting, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we were already in the process. We were. I was already developing a course because you know that's another thing that you must do if you if you want to be successful is you got to keep the lid off. You got to keep being a student, hmm. you know, and keep learning. And I'm always evaluating everything that we do and then level it up and then level it up and level it up. And you know, we started teaching around my kitchen table. Mm. And uh, yeah, my oh, there was there's a student who was in my very very first course, and um, she had never written anything. She was just learning, and now she's a USA Today bestselling author, and she's got over a dozen books. I don't even know how many now. Wow! But um, the but then you know we just kept expanding, and I used to lead a three day course from yellow sheets, and it was like two pages of yellow sheets. Which expanded and expanded until, you know, <laughs> we got to where we were leading from hotels all over the country, mm. students in every U.S. time zone, yeah. and some in other countries. and um, But um, we were already at work in how do we make what we teach accessible to more people. Right. So was already in the works. I had gone to a uh, writer's conference. I'm going to say it's about seven years ago. I went to um, a conference in Manhattan and I was on my way back to the airport and I'm really kind of a nervous mini about travel and about be. I'm a homebody. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of writers, we are, I know y'all get me. And um, so I was a little bit freaking out about going to Manhattan and um And I was concerned about the cost of this trip. And I had a friend who's a pilot who got me a free airline ticket. And then I had gotten in touch with one of my fans who I I stayed in his daughter's room and his granny got up and made me breakfast every day on (laughs) Roosevelt Island. And they made sure I knew exactly which subways, you know, I was taking. And I started running into the same people on the subway. It was pretty cool. But um, on my way back home, It was St. Patrick's Day, and I was a big winner at this conference. The um, manuscript that I was um, pitching, Macmillan wanted it, Simon & Schuster wanted it, um, Random House wanted it, but I still had this experience of, it was like being bludgeoned, kind of, (laughs) like having been beaten up. I, um, I wouldn't... I, I, I ate every meal at McDonald's because I was like, terrified to go around the corner <laughs> because I was afraid I'd get lost, mm-hmm. you know, in Manhattan. I'm oh, like, yeah. yeah. Right. And and it's such a raw experience to expose your work to others, you know, because they might say men. <laughs> yeah. They might say change this or change that. But you're so attached to it, you know, that it, it's a personal experience. Oh, yeah. So, you know, I was glad to have won, but I did have the experience of having gone to battle. And um, so I'm on my way back to the airport. I'm pulling my luggage down the street because there's so much loud, drunken, green sequenced foot traffic (laughs) that that I was going past a bar is what it was. And so um, I hear a man's voice say, you can't change the world, but you can change an idea. So I stop and I look. And then, and I, and and there's this homeless man sitting there and he's saying it to everybody who walks by, you can't change the world, but you can change an idea. And so I have to pull my suitcase up and argue with him about that. And I say, um, 
that's not true. Steve Jobs changed the world. Martin Luther King did. Mother Teresa Gandhi changed the world. Mm -hmm. He said, no, they changed an idea. And the world could do nothing less than follow suit. So I missed my flight because we stood there and talked for a good two hours. Um, but he and I made a promise. His name was Christopher Lee Cottom. He had uh, cardboard signed his way from Alaska. And that was his access to making a difference in the world. We promised each other we would each heed Mother Teresa's admonition to um, never worry about numbers, help other people, and always start with the person nearest you. And so having just come off of this experience at this writer's conference, which at the time, until, until Calliope <laughs> was the most effective writer's conference in the industry. It's like, this was the conference to go to if you want to get represented by an agent. Hmm. And um, I, but I was just like, there's got to be a way to do this so that the supports writers and has us have an experience of um, you know being cradled. And that's what we call it, a cradle for your creativity is what we created. And so, so it's like, that's my access to making all the difference I can in the world because one book can reach millions. And I know this for a fact because I wrote this book, Beyond the Darkness, in the, in the late 90s. And I get email today. Mm. Every day I get email from people thanking me for writing this book because they didn't end their lives because they got their hands on Beyond the Darkness. Wow. So that's, you know, that's the bottom line is yeah. you know, we're out to make a difference. And um, with our self-help and our sci-fi and <laughs> you know like seriously if yeah. you think about it you know star wars made it okay to have this like it brought it into the common conversation having this experience of this you know burning in your chest this knowing and following that truth right mm -hmm. that's now common in our conversation and um you know to kill a mockingbird it's that's fiction yeah and it impacted me it's like you know, these books that are fiction impact us sometimes even more profoundly than nonfiction. Yeah. So, so that's, that's the bottom line. Calliope's, uh, it's, 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 it's just extraordinary. But the whole thing is, is how do we get this to more people who have a desire to make a difference right. with however they make their difference? But that's, it's kind of this qualifier. Those are the people that find us. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, we, we talk about on the show a lot about overcoming obstacles, facing your fears and overcoming obstacles and, and how you do it. So tell me how, what kind of obstacles you've, you've had to overcome to create this presence, this, this coaching package, I guess, or this coaching, coaching method. Oh, what a great question for me, <laughs> because <laughs> it's like the, the, the writing coaching, um, like I'm very trained and developed in um, high level um, coaching. Like I coached the Panda Express people, um, like I've coached TV show hosts and creators. And, you know, I've coached some big, some big names in the industry around personal and professional development. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but what comes naturally and easily for me is creating and seeing this amazing content, the curriculum that anybody can consume and just holy cow, create amazing stories with. Mm -hmm. But what comes very hard for me and like I, I never get over this and I even teach how to do it. Right. But I have to use my own tools all the time. And that is. I just get very, very nervous about presenting, about like being on a podcast, <laughs> any kind of, any kind of putting myself out there, Facebook live, I'm telling you, it's just, it wrecks me. Mm. So I have um, this method that we teach actually, and that is separating yourself out. You're, you have an experience as a human being walking around. You have a physical experience, okay? You mm -hmm. feel your heart start racing, your breathing increases, you have touch, you have an actual physical sensation. Right. Then you also have thoughts, okay? 
thoughts like, oh, I am really going to mess this up and I'm going to be the worst <laughs> guest that Jay's ever had on his show. And, you know, people are never going to be able to understand what I'm saying because I ramble. All of that, you have thoughts and then right. you also have emotions and emotions are your triggers. You know, that's where we can get caught up because your emotions are tied back all the way to your early experience and childhood. Mm -hmm. Your emotions get tied up, attached to experiences of failure, rejection, shame, because your brain is wired to keep you alive. And the way that your brain interprets, you know, an experience like, oh, I'm four years old, I'm eating a brownie and I'm spitting the nuts on the ground. And some grown up is saying, that's really awful. Go pick up the nuts and throw them away. You know, my experience is the same experience as would be if I was about to be hit by a bus mm. in your brain. So your mm. brain is wired up to keep you safe right? and small. And all of these things, they, they talk to each other, right? So everything gets aligned and colludes against you <laughs> to keep you. And like for me, to keep me from getting up, I so wanted to text you, Jay. And say, I'm not doing it today. I can't do it. I can't, do it. I can't breathe. You know, but yep. it's like you have to take that experience and recognize, like, thank your brain. Brain, thank you for keeping me alive. I'm going to do a podcast energy right now. Yeah. I promise I'll come back and we can be all nervous later, <laughs> but we're out to make a difference. So that's my access is connecting up to what's more important and what's bigger than my fear. Right. What's bigger? What's bigger? And, yeah. and, and, the, the facing that fear, being on the podcast when you're, when you're mortally afraid of messing up and, oh, do I know that feeling? <laughs> My, well, we all do. That's the yeah. thing. It's like we think we're all alone in this, you know, but right. every single human being, if you are breathing in and out, I don't care who you are, you have these experiences that are right. common to all human right. beings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you are, we are definitely not alone in our fears. We have all got yeah. fears. We've all got things that keep us where we are because it's comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so. Totally. <laughs> yes, comfort. Exactly. Comfort is, yeah. is a horrible thing, but boy, do we like it. Yeah, so. comfort will keep us safe and small. Oh. And small is yeah. the thing. So, yeah, I connect up to what's, what difference do I want to make while I'm breathing in and out on this planet yeah and, and it's like it's when i put it inside of that context it's absolutely unconceivable to me that i would just spend my life hunkered down you know writing and you know taking care of family it's inconceivable to me yeah. now for you it might be something else entirely and that's the key about it is it just it, it, you've got to find what lights you up yeah. What will have you step out of that comfort zone right. so that you can live a bigger life, one that has more value for you, well, you know? Yeah, and that's that's why this podcast all started. I was I was all ready to retire in a few years and get in my recliner and and like my dad did and just sit and watch, you know, sports and read the paper at night and and that was his life after we retired and and mm -hmm. I thought, oh man, that's just the example I've got. So you know, it looks good, and it's it's what I have. And then I started thinking about it and experiencing some new things with um, the tribe of kings and meeting new people and people that I had thought I would never meet people like I have, like you, um, like Michael, your husband, and and there are people who affected my whole mindset to mm. where no i i need to to help people see what i saw and right. to, to say you right. know it, it's scary doing these podcasts it's scary i'm trying to start my own voiceover business and those things are scary to me i've been told you know i've got this wonderful voice and all my life i've been told you know you ought to be in radio you ought to do all these things but they were scary to me because i really i didn't know the people i didn't know how to do this and so, um, but it's the same kind of thing. You find out how to do this. You find out how, what the, what the formula is mm -hmm. to make this happen, how to tell a story, how to express an idea. And I think that is 
all of us really have a story to tell. And we how do. we tell it um, depends on how we feel we can tell the best story. Well, here's the thing. It's we're all storytellers. And I hear this over and over again. Is my story viable? Is this viable? Is it, well, is it good? It's seriously the schematic. It's how you tell it. <laughs> You know, it's like there are no new stories under the sun, frankly, nothing new. And, you know, I could totally take something and deconstruct it and show you like, oh, look, Napoleon Dynamite is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's the Mm. same story. And, we, you know, we could line up all these stories and I can do it with anything new out there, trace it back and say, okay, well, actually, you know, that's 10 Little Indians. That was Agatha Christie is where this came from, Knives Out. And then, you know, yeah. on and on and on. So it's about getting your own little twist in there. And I'll tell you what, the gatekeepers, the publishers, and the um, film producers, because we work with these guys, right? Mm-hmm. The, um, the literary agents, the publishers, the film producers, they don't want new and different, never been done before. What they want is what works, what, what will sell with your unique fresh take. Right. And that's because human beings, it resonates with us. Yeah. They want what resonates with human beings, what resonates with us. It's common across, it's common across all languages and, you know, it places on the planet and even time, you know, all the way back to, you know, the beginning of human storytelling. Yeah. It's really the same elements. So it's, 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 um, it's interesting you were talking about, you know, facing your fears and, you know, doing a podcast and like, oh, I've never done this before. So um, my oldest son is an RN and he and his wife and my three grandkids, they lived with us when he was going to nursing school. And uh, what we found was like kind of surprising was that um, as soon as he was in clinicals, they were practicing. They would watch an RV and then they are doing an, I mean, a, an IV. Watch mm-hmm. a nurse do an IV and then they do an IV like that. Mm-hmm. Um, my kids and I, we all use a dental school. And oftentimes we are the very first patient. They do a root canal. That's it. They've done it. That's crossed off. So many people think you have to know so much. Right. Right. I started around my kitchen table. No kidding. I saw a need. Like, how can I help these people? And how can I help more than one yeah. at a time? Oh, lead a course. There you go. Yeah. And nobody knows what they're doing at the beginning. <laughs> nobody. Like, we don't have a field of science. We right. don't. Right. Well, they didn't begin by somebody experimenting. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 Well, let's take a a quick break here and uh, pay some bills, and then we'll be back to to talk to Angie more about her, how you can get in touch with her, and, and maybe get that book that's inside of you out. So we'll be right back. You are listening to Resilience Talk Network, everyday talk for everyday lives. everyone, I'm Sarah Griffiths, the producer of Becoming the Light from the Shadows of Abuse podcast. And you can listen to my show every Monday at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, right here on Five Kingdoms Radio. My name is Alan Christofferson. You don't know me. Just another book in the library, my father would say, unopened and unread. You have no idea how far I've come or what I've lost. More important, you have no idea what I've found. I'm no one important or famous, no matter. It's better to be loved by one person who knows your soul than millions who don't even know your phone number. I have loved and been loved as deeply as a man can hope for, which makes me a lucky man. It also means that I have suffered. Life has taught me that in order to fly, you must first accept the possibility of falling. I don't know if anyone will ever read what I'm writing, but if you're holding this book, then you've found my story. 
that makes you my fellow sojourner. If you find something in my journey that will help you with yours, keep it. Some might call this a love story. Those without love will call it a travelogue. To me, it's one man's journey to find hope. There are things that happened to me that you might not believe. There were lessons learned that you might not be ready for. No matter. Accept or dismiss what you will. But let me warn you in advance, which is more than I got, that what you read won't be easy, but it's a story worth telling. It's the story of my walk. Welcome back to Rebuilding with Jay Walter. I'm here with Angie Fenimore, fantastic writing coach and, and all around good person, really. Um, so we were talking about um, this, this new uh, program that you're putting together. Tell us, tell us a little bit more about how it's structured, what people can expect, and that kind of thing. Certainly. So it's eight. It's, it's a whole program. It's all online participate online. Um, and when you join, when you register, you're added to a Facebook group that's um, only students and coaches. And so you have access to Facebook Lives with me once a week where you can bring your questions, your own mm. questions about your own project. And so the whole program is eight courses, mm -hmm. entire courses. And we cover everything from empowerment. In fact, that's where we start is we do some brain work together so that you can do what I do in separating out your experience, your physical, your thoughts, your emotional experience from the work so that you can actually just work on the work mm. <laughs> and have it not be personal. Yeah. And you can stop trying to elevate those first three chapters and you can just draft that project. We draft the project very, very quickly all the way to the end because the magic happens in revision. And then, um, and then I teach you this secret science of storytelling. So, <clears throat> and I can't really, it's like, a, there's just no way it would take hours to do it now. Yeah. But I can point to, so Steven Spielberg does this naturally. I don't think Spielberg had, has had anything that wasn't a hit in its genre. Right. And, um, but yet look at what happened with Star Wars. It's, you know, anybody who is a Star Wars aficionado and, you know, I'm not, so I can't tell you which ones, but <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about. There are, a there's a period where Star, Star Wars fans were upset and um, <clears throat> about the quality of, mm -hmm. you know, the show or the veering off track or this should have happened instead. Look at Stranger Things, um, the Netflix series, mm -hmm. season one, genius, season two, really tight season three what happened yeah um Aaron Sorkin who um made newsroom and a million other things um he says that he's happy if he gets one in three hits right mm. so what we do is we look from what are the common denominators what are they all doing and that was when I was able to see how it is the story is constructed the parts that the industry have missed. I don't know why nobody's seeing this and teaching it, but they're not. And it's effective every mm -hmm. time. It's mm -hmm. like super effective. So you're going to learn that. And then when we get to revision, um, I've created all kinds of tools. There are, I believe, four or five tools that we use that simplify the process so that you're not confused about what you need to do and what needs to go where. You can just see it. You start to become, you know, the magician right. rather than sitting there in the show wondering how in the world they made that body disappear in midair. Right. It's like you're behind the scenes and you can see how to do this. Mm. That's my intention is that you are able to pull off the magic, you know, rather than always having to have somebody show you how. So right. I coach rather than I don't advise, I coach. That's entirely a different field entirely where I support you in discovering for yourself so that you can duplicate it so that you can always come back to it. And then we, um, we train you how to pitch and then you have access to um, the Calliope advanced pitch conference, which is the most effective pitch conference in the industry um, where you get to pitch to 
um, top deal making literary agents to wow. the film producers who made things like um, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies franchise and um, Deadpool and you know publishers like Tor if you're uh, if you write sci-fi fantasy mm -hmm. and we've never had anybody that didn't walk away with at least one request from that wow from that course and we've been doing it for six years several times a year and um, it's because we train you we train yeah. you we train you first <laughs> just throw you in there <laughs> and um so then we um we walk through what you need to be doing also as a business owner as an author oh that's good is, yeah you're not just it doesn't work to just write a book anymore you they're long gone are the days where they pick you up with at the airport with the limo with the, your name on the sign and take you to the four seasons you know, yeah. they just don't do that anymore. Um, and um, so we walk you through, how do you, what are you looking at when you're creating a brand? And how do you do this authentically such that it's appealing, such that you're going to get yeses because it's, it's really the whole package. And so we simplify that. I'm not saying it's not work. It is. It's a lot of work. Um, but it's work with guidance and focus right. and direction so that you're not spinning wheels and, you know, and then finding out the hard long way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was not the thing to do. <laughs> yeah. There is a lot of, lot to this business side of things. I've, I'm finding that out with, with what I'm trying to do, how to market yourself, how to create that brand, how to, um, really let people know that you want to know who you are and what you can do for them and how you can help them and that kind of thing. That, that is a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. Mm, so, it's, I would say in the book publishing industry, it's half of it. Yeah. Which doesn't mean you don't, you really do have to put out a quality project too. Yeah. You know, well, and in, in that, that portion of your program would be good for anybody who's trying to be, a uh, independent contractor or be self-employed mm -hmm. that 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 side of it is really much more important than anybody thinks it is i think that hasn't well, done it before what's interesting is our students um report that it, it's just very interesting yeah they they got this book done and they learned so much about writing but everybody reports their life changed mm. actually that's what we hear over and over, <laughs> that their life changed. Wow. You know, that yeah. they have um, access to tools now that they use everywhere in their life, yeah. you know, to oh, cool. um, improve the quality of their life. That's cool. Yeah. Breakthroughs in relationships. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's very interesting because well, if you have a breakthrough around one thing, it's going to affect everything else yeah. in your life too. So. Well, and, and just some training on how to create relationships with with people that you can help and they can help you that learning how to do that, I think is, is one of my, uh, um, I don't know. One of my goals is to figure out, teach myself or learn from you, um, how to create those relationships that, that I may need to further what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And so that, uh, um, that's always a, a plus to, to get that kind of information, that kind of training from somebody who's done it, who's been there. And, and, you know, I'm again, being an engineer, interpersonal skills, um, are not real well, <laughs> um, taught to engineering students. You just need to sit in a cube and do your job. Um, mm. and so, you know, it's, that is, is one of the things I think that, I really have been working on trying to build up is how to create those, those relationships. And well, you know, what's interesting is um, I think what we find when we actually talk to people is that other people are dealing with the same thing. Yeah. It's not. And so the more isolated, the less that we, that we share ourselves with others, the more that we think I'm the only one. Right. That deals with this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And um, it, it's like, you know, people, writers tend to think that agents are mean, frankly. And the, the truth is, is they're just as nervous as you are when it's time to pitch. They mm. really are. Mm. 
Yeah. And we're all human. We're all in this human family. And the more that we share, the more that we find out, oh, we all have things that we feel like we're really good at and that we feel like we're not so good at. Like I would tell you, like, I'm really uncomfortable in front of a room presenting, but nobody would ever know that. About no, me. no. I look, don't I? Don't oh, I? Oh, yeah. You are I rock solid up there um, when you're you know, in front of a you group. Know why? You know what the key is? Is the first thing I do when I get up there is I tell the truth <laughs> and I say it. I say, let me tell you. I, uh, if, Michael always says this at the beginning of every course. He says, if you're nervous, you're in good company. What Bruce Springsteen says when he feels like he's ready to throw up is it's showtime. Hmm. Right? Yep. And then I share about, yeah, let me tell you, I have two days of diarrhea before I present every time. <laughs> I just come clean. Yeah. And then I just tell them straight up, I'm nervous. And then there's automatic connection there. And then I can connect human to human. Yeah. And make the difference I'm going to make. So... You know? Well, and, and everybody in the audience understands that because they've tried mm -hmm. to be in front of people and they know what that's right. like. And they say, oh, she's a real person. She's right. not some, exactly. some uh, extraordinary, you know, special. She's like me. I can deal with that. Mm -hmm. Which is what you've got to have if you want to make a difference for, right. for others. Yeah. It's, um, I just read an article in, I want to say it was in Inc. Magazine, I'm pretty sure. Um and it was a, a litigator. Oh, yeah, I read the article and there's also a TED Talk. So you could look this up. And I, I apologize that I don't have the name. But he was a litigator and he was um, he's taken a lot of cases up to the Supreme Court. And he gave three pieces of advice for influencing people. Yeah. And um, he says, everyone thinks it's confidence. It's not. It's connecting. It's like being relatable. Mm. Like you want to be relatable. Yeah. And I just thought that was so great, number one, that somebody who's argued cases, lots of them, and one of the Supreme Court says what I say. Yeah. Hey. You know, a yeah. lot of validation there. But yeah. it's true. It's not about being confident and thinking that you know all the answers. Guess what? Nobody does. And the minute you have all the answers, guess what? That's the lid. You can't learn anymore. And <laughs> well, we have these mirror neurons. People recognize it if you're not being straight. So. Yeah. And if the, you know all the answers, they change the questions, I find. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so you don't have to have anything figured no. out. No. Make a difference and, in your corner of the world. And you make that corner of the world as big as you want that corner to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm finding the more. You know, I, I started out doing voiceovers and did the big announcer voice and everybody's got to be, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, this is, everybody's got to buy it. And the more I, I, jobs I get is when I'm more relatable, when I'm just me mm -hmm. talking yeah. to you. Yeah. And on this podcast, the, the podcasts that do the best are when I'm just me talking to you. And mm -hmm. uh, again, we tell that story. And we relate, and this is how I did it, and this is this is my experience, and and you probably feel the same way in a lot of things. So, well, what's you know. interesting too is um, when we train our writers how to pitch, and one of the reasons we're so effective is we train them in how to just like separate. Yeah, you're going to be nervous, and to just get that out there. I'm nervous, and then whoosh, scoop it out of the way, so that they can just be authentic and be yeah. themselves. Yeah. You know, because that's it's just <laughs> absolutely human of us, right? right. Of all of us to right. just want to make connections with each other. So I'm excited about this course. Tell us how we can. Okay. Um, cool. So get to we're going to create a link just for you Ooh. so that your listeners um, get a huge discount. I have, I'm really committed that anybody in the, on the planet who has a story in them can do this. So, I hear it all the time. This should be a $12,000 course. I don't do that. Mm. It's, um, yeah, it's a $400, $500 course, $495. And we're cutting it way back to, um, I want to say $195. I could be wrong. It might be $295 for your okay. listeners. So, um, so what did you say $295? Yeah, $295. If they so see $195, $295 they'll be surprised. Yeah. 
Yeah, there you go. And we can maybe we can put that up in the show notes. Yeah, I'll put that in the show notes with a link. And uh, and there's all kinds of information on that link too. So if you are a questioner and you just got to ask all kinds of questions, your answers are there. Because okay. I come from that space too. <laughs> I take all my questions answered as well. Yeah, yeah. Before I kind of lay out that kind of money, even one ninety five is a lot of money to just lay out there without knowing what's going on. So um, that's a good thing. So there you okay, go. in the show notes you will find a link to Angie's course. Answer all your questions. Give you a chance to be the ability to sign up. I would imagine. Um, yeah. Learn more about Angie and uh, this this writing course. Um, how else can people get a hold of you? What are some other uh, just emails, websites? Yeah, so my email is Angie at AngieFenimore.com. Okay. And I'm at Facebook. Okay. And you want to do a you want to do a search on Angie Fenimore um, Writing Coach Calliope Writing Coach. If you if you type in Calliope Writing Coach, you're going to get me. Okay. And it's this cool picture. A cool headshot of me, Josh Rossi, who's, um, he's the commercial photographer who did Justice League Kids, like oh. a million views, and yeah. had his daughter in Wonder Woman costume, he did that, he, he did my headshot for me, so I'm sitting there <laughs> with a book, and it's glowing yellow, and <laughs> I'm reading to a cat and a bunny, and uh, so you can't miss it, in a little library. Okay, cool. Okay, all of the contact information that we can get will be on the show notes as well. So if you're driving, don't worry about writing this all down. Um, we will make sure you have what you need. So, uh, Angie, any any last thoughts, any last words as we come to the, the end of our show today? Well, I just want to remind everybody, you're already a writer. It's in your DNA. You've been a writer ever since your great-great-grand cave parents started drawing on the wall. And then you went to kindergarten and it got drained <laughs> out of you. Yes. Yep. Stop that being creative. <laughs> do what you're told to do. All right. So um, everybody out there that, that is even in the least bit interested in writing their story, writing about their life, um, let's uh, look at the show notes, get online and uh, and – let Angie help you get to where you want to be. So, Well, thanks so much for having me, Jay. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. It. I appreciate you being here and uh, sharing your, your knowledge and your information with my listeners. So. Well, you're welcome. All right. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. As always, thank you for listening to Rebuilding. I hope that you have heard something today that will help you on your path to rebuilding your life. Something resonated. If you felt a call to action, please take that action and rebuild. Let me know what you think of today's show or any of my shows. You can leave comments at rebuilding.podbean.com or email at j at jwalter.com. I would love to hear from you comments, suggestions, and topics that you would like me to cover are always welcome. Remember, a dream written down with a deadline is a goal, and a goal achieved is a dream come true. Until next time, I am Jay Walter, and I am always rebuilding. <laughs>